Yeah, thank you. So I, I'm going to introduce basically uh, how, how to look at the changes from the user's perspective. First, uh, the five and 20 year uh, exceedance probability layers, we did a slight change. It's not a fundamental change, but hopefully still going to be well received. We reduced the number of uh, color ranges from 10 to six, which hopefully will increase the readability of the maps and provide a better description of the uh, zero to 100 percent range. The next uh, improvement that we introduced is about uh, around the upstream area layer, which used to be called upstream area layer, so the river network. And this layer is now uh, drawn up with streams of the rivers. And additionally, we also changed the name to Lis Flood Danish Network to actually reflect these changes. So this new river, river network hopefully will greatly improve the user's experience as it provides a better impression of basically how are the rivers situated and also will allow the users to overlay different layers. So other hydrological layers that include cell coloring will be able to overlay on top the river network. But for this, the river network needs to come on top. So in case it's loaded and it comes below, then please change the order of the layers. In this new uh, river network layer, the larger rivers displayed uh, with thicker and also darker gray lines, which gives a stronger visual impression of the river size. But the users zoom out, they only see the larger rivers and they zoom in, then they will see all the rivers up to the 500 square kilometer minimum area at the moment. And another major change we applied in version 3.4 is how the flood severity is characterized, which is best demonstrated on the flood summary layers. We now, as uh, Juan explained, we use the three probabilities of exceeding two, five, and 20 year threshold levels. The flood severity levels are determined based on the 30 day ma maximum probabilities over a period. And these three levels are represented by the usual yellow for two year, red for five year, and uh, purple for 20 year probabilities. The main severity levels are divided into three subcategories. So this is how we end up with the three by three in total nine different flood categories. So the probabilities go from 30 to 50 percent, 50 to 75 and 75 to 100 percent in all the three color or, or severity categories. In addition to the existing flood summary layers, there is now a new layer, not just the day 1 to 3, 4 to 10 and 11 to 30, but covering the whole 30 day period. In earlier GLOFAS versions, the flood severity was dependent on the 30 day maximum ensemble mean discharge and not the probabilities. For example, a five year flood bent the maximum ensemble mean was between the five year and the 20 year return period threshold. We have changed this to use now the probabilities in order to provide better consistency between the reporting points and the flood summary layer. So you, you can see the consistency is, is really a focal point of the changes we applied in this version. The reporting point layer provides detailed information on the expected flood situation for these representative points. And it includes the fixed points and also the dynamic points. And as we explained before, the dynamic points are over areas where we don't have fixed point and we have flood signal in the model. And these are now defined using this combined probability based on the three exceedance probabilities over the whole 30 day period. And as we all already pointed out, this we believe provide better consistency across different products. As a very important feature in version 3.4, uh, the dynamic point generation was redesigned as Juan introduced it. And I want to re reiterate two major changes. So first of all, we really believe the coverage is much better now. So we did before only use the five year probability to define the dynamic points and therefore flood areas which only had the two year level were sometimes completely missed. So now we really added a great deal of effort to basically provide as homogeneous as possible coverage. And another major improvement is basically the consistency in the location. So the dynamic points in themselves are also fixed uh, throughout the duration of the flood events. 
and will only disappear when the flood signal disappears, which in the new system means that the two year probability decreases below the 30% minimum value. And this is hopefully really going to provide the best monitoring possibility for the for the users in their area. To take an example, let's choose this example catchment, which is represented by the upward purple triangle there and with the number 31. So after users click on these points, this particular one, this pop up window appears and the top uh, two and the top part, you have two kind of rows, two tables. The first one shows the metadata information. This is a dynamic point. So a station name, you only see not a station. For fixed points, you see everything, but the location, the latitude, longitude, and the upstream area is there. The second table shows information on the forecast, the forecast probabilities, exceedance probabilities, the alert level, and the peak timing uh, whenever the peak is expected, and so on. In GLOFAS, the ECMWF ensemble prediction system is used for the metallurgical forcing data, which has 51 ensemble members to represent all the forecast scenarios. The evolution of the ensemble is represented by these box and whisker uh, plots for each of the day 30 day forecast in the harder graph. The median is this horizontal line and it falls within the box, which represents the interquartile age, basically 50%, the middle 50% of the ensemble uh, distribution. In version 3.4, now not only the river discharge peak date is provided, but also another date, which is the date when the maximum probability will happen. This was added to provide a probability consistent peak date, as everything now is based on the probabilities, as sometimes this peak and the discharge peak basically don't fall on the same lead time. And also the discharge peak now is based on computed with the um, ensemble median, not the mean as before, again as a reflection on the increased consistency. The shape of the reporting point re, uh, remains unchanged, so the upward triangle continues to show increasing trend and the downward decreasing flow, while the circle shows the stagnating flow in the 30-day period. We have also made an adjustment in the discharge tendency computation and now again use the ensemble median for better consistency across all the products. For example, uh, this particular catchment has a peak in two days, which is the day three of the forecast, and both the median based and the probability, highest probability based peaks are on the exact same date. This example reporting point also highlights how the flood categorization work now based on these three probabilities. The river cell on the map appears as light purple based on the days 1 to 30 flood summary layer. It has exactly the same information and same color as this 20 year probability exceeds the 30 percent. So it was characterized as a 20 year flood severity. This is the lightest because the 31% falls into the 30 to 50, so the lowest uh, subcategory based on the probabilities. In case this were a value was a bit lower, like 29%, then we would downgrade this point to the red, so the five-year flood signal, and would appear by red, and because the five-year probability is, in this case, the maximum 78%, so it would appear the darkest red because it's above 75%. And in the same way, <clears throat> the probabilities, the value ranges and the colors of the flood summary layers are now used for the overview and consistency tables in the bottom part of the pop out windows. This first overview uh, table basically summarizes absolutely everything. So for each day, we basically produce kind of like a flood categorization and sort the information into one of the nine categories. So as you see, we start with 100 in the day first with dark yellow, which means that there is no five year probability over 30 percent. So it's only the two year flood, but the highest category based on the probability. By day two, the discharge increases. So we go into the red category because we increase over the 30 percent five-year uh, uh, exceedance probability, 
and because it's over 75 percent it appears to be the darkest red and then so on the day three will be purple as we explained before with the 31 percent between the 30 and 50 percent and so on for each day we basically characterize the flood situation based on the three probabilities and sort into one of the nine different uh, flood categories so on top of it another change we have made on the reporting point appearance is the border color as you can see now not every marker appears with the gray default border but some has black border which means flood is expected in maximum two days so basically in the first three days of the forecast horizon in this case for this catchment it was in two days so on day three of the forecast another aspect of the flood timing we really wanted to indicate and we got feedback from the users as well for doing it is if the flood appears only in the latter part of the 30 days so basically it's not really imminent maybe users don't need to worry about it just yet this is represented with great colors so you can see in the southern southeastern part of brazil so great yellow great red and so on this example is a great red so the five-year probability is above 30 percent in this case 33 but great because the flood is not peaking in the first 10 days as you can see it's just increasing and basically in this case almost at the very end we have the highest median and the highest probabilities and these great colors only applied if the first 10 days we don't have flood conditions because we wanted to avoid really that starting from a very high value and that keeps keeps increasing and we have peaks beyond day 10. So it really means that the flood is distant. And now we are at the very last uh, change I want to introduce where we have to actually rescale the y-axis because for many uh, events, many catchments, when we have very high ensemble members and the large ensemble range covered, we saw cases when the information was at the very bottom of the graph. So now we use the interquantile range to actually set the maximum on the y-axis and instead the ensemble the highest the top ensemble will appear as numbers over the graph area as as, as you can see if, if you see like the largest number is 25 so basically in the old model version we would have 25 as the maximum on the y-axis so everything would be really pushed down and in the extreme cases users probably didn't see anything for these kind of events. And with this, I thank you for your attention and that was all. Thank you.